Hey guys, EBP Man here, and today we're taking a look at lasers from GWIP. We're taking a look at two lasers, or actually three specific functions in lasers. We're looking at their M series. This big guy behind me, I have the remote in hand, so I'm dangerous, gives you the ability to cut, engrave, and weld a variety of materials. This is a six in one laser at large scale that's going to allow large manufacturing and even the super serious hobbyist to get incredible cuts, welds, and yes, even engraves because it even has CO2 capabilities that allow you to work with organic materials, which kind of blows my mind. Super large machine and you're going to see it in action today. We're also taking a look at the G3 and many of you have participated in the Kickstarter where you were really anticipating this laser. This is again a more smaller footprint laser that's going to allow you to use both a diode and a MOPA laser to create incredible products as well. Uh, we'll see both of the machines in action. We're going to see it cutting a lot of different materials from carbon steel to stainless steel. Also, we're looking at acrylic and wood and many other things. We're going to see these machines also vaporizing rust. And surprisingly, that's a big deal. So we'll take a look at all these machines in action. And once again, we're coming to you live from Chicago, which is something I didn't anticipate to do with GWIC, but we're here and we're going to check out all they have to offer. So let's get right to it. Now, the very first machine we're going to take a look at is going to be their six-in-one machine. And I just wanted to highlight some of the aspects of the back. The fact that it does have an onboard chiller. You'll notice that it has a massive exhaust. And again, just everything in this laser is going to be super sized. Now, as we're looking at the laser being set up for actual uh, engraving, or in this case, cutting, uh, this is a six-in-one uh, machine. This is going to be CNC laser cutter. It's a fiber laser. It's a welder. It's a CO2 laser cutter. Uh, so it's going to be able to cover both organic and inorganic materials. And the speed in which this is able to cut through some very thick material is pretty impressive. Now, while this machine uh, is large, it really operates and has the same basic principles that you see with um, any laser that we've dealt with. First, it's going to touch the bed um, or the material itself so that it can make sure that it is in focus. And then it's going to start to cut. The whole thing about this, though, is the speed in which it cuts some very thick material is pretty incredible. So right now what we're working on is some stainless steel. And we brought several jig samples uh, so that we can see the machine actually cut it. So we have done our uh, leveling, right? So we're in focus now. And what we're going to do next is do a frame. And then once we've done the frame, we're going to cut through this stainless steel. And I just want you to see how fast it's able to cut. And also, it cuts really, really cleanly. This is with um, absolute precision. And I was just impressed so much by how fast it was able to cut through the material. And you can see this process. It, you know, it's, it's already almost 50% done. Because now it's just going to do the four uh, guide holes. And then it is going to go ahead and cut out the frame. And check how fast this thing is going. And we're done. That's it. That's how fast it is. It's super crazy. Now, the next piece of material, and this is a repetitive process, right? All we did is we switched out the material. In this case, we're using brass. And this is going to be great for you to cut out your own Challenger coin blanks. As you see, we actually cut one uh, for uh, a further engraving that we're going to do with the G3. But it's the same process. Uh, typically, what you do is you go in, you make sure the materials are going to be different thicknesses. They're also different types. So we went and actually made those adjustments. And then we started the cut process. And I just want to show you, again, this is the same design. Now this is going through brass. And you can see how quickly and how cleanly this is going through this material and just uh, creating another, another jig. In this case, this is going to be a Challenger coin jig, but it's made out of brass. The previous one was stainless steel. And now we have a brass version. And again, it's just speed and power here of this cutter. Uh, this material, obviously, when it cuts, can be hot. So we wait a little bit. We don't just take it off immediately. And uh, you'll see how good the quality is on this. Let's go ahead and pop this guy out. Tap it out. And here's our part. Check that out, guys. That's how fast it is. Now, we can obviously clean that up a little bit later, but it went so well. Now, next, I think we're doing some carbon steel here. And to give you a sense of how thick this machine can cut, being the material, uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight is that it basically can do up to 10 millimeters thick carbon steel. 
you'll notice that the bed went down a little bit. So the actual bed has the ability to rise and drop. It actually has rollers that allows you to put full sheets to slide it in. It has almost like a conveyor where you can put a full sheet because as we were looking at this metal and while these pieces are small, I just kept on thinking about, wow, this piece of metal is heavy. What if I wanted to cut a larger sheet? And especially if you're using this in more of a commercial sense. And immediately what they did is they opened up the front of the laser and it has these wheels. And that bed that you see right there went down just like you saw a couple seconds ago. And it would allow you to insert a full sheet of carbon steel, which is going to require a couple people because that stuff is heavy. But you could actually cut it as well. Now, this is probably the thickest of all the materials that we cut. But it still got through it like butter. So I saw it cut acrylic. I saw it cut wood. I saw it cut, um, you know, obviously the mild steel, stainless steel. And it didn't seem to have a problem with either of them, right? It just handled them as if it was the same material every single time, even though we had to make some changes in the settings when it came to power. But you can see here, this is again, uh, thick material. This is steel. I think this is the mild steel one that we're cutting. And you could see a carbon steel this is just cutting it without a problem. This is, this is just incredible how fast it is. And you'll see, it will do the other point for our, for our, uh, again, a screw hole. Now, the one thing I did notice is that when it does that initial tap and it cuts through, I did notice some, I I'll just say a burring on the sides and that you'd have to clean post, right? But it wasn't something that was going to impact the part. I found that the, that the brass was clean. The stainless steel was very clean as well. But when it came to these thicker uh, pieces of material, I found that there could be some finish that needed to be given and maybe with a grinder or something like that. But still, you know, to get this type of cut out is fast. Now, this was hot. This was really hot. So we had to wait a little bit before we were able to, you know, actually work with it because of how much heat is retained. But once, uh, so you'll see us grab it um, in a second you'll see us grab it with gloves because of the heat, but you can see how thick this material is. And boy, this thing was hot and we had to let it sit for a while because it was so, so hot. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch laser source types. I want to show you how easy it is because we've been cutting up to this point metal. So we've been using again, the actual, uh, you know, one laser type that's going to give us the ability to do all the cutting for the metal. Now we're going to be switching to another laser type, which is our CO2. And our CO2, we're going to be working with wood. So you see me putting here a piece of wood. We're going to go ahead and do the focus. We're going to go ahead and do the framing. And in this case, I'm cutting out parts to a uh, lantern, right? So this is going to be like a Halloween lantern um, cut out. So let's see how that runs. Now, one thing that we did as we're cutting the actual wood is we added some water. So we sprayed some water to the very bottom of the bed. So the bed has kind of like some rocks in there, almost like pebbles. And we did that because of the power of the CO2 laser. And that was the only thing that I also actually noticed. And what you'll see is as soon as it starts um, cutting, this cuts fast and it cuts clean. And so if you're used to using a, you know, a standard CO2 or even a dial laser, you're going to see the speed in which this machine is able to go through wood and do it pre with precision and clean is... You just can't compare it to anything else that you've uh, potentially experienced in the market. So right now you can see the cutting is taking place and it's just going to continue to just cut out all the detail that this piece has. And it's doing again the inside components of the candle, which or the lantern, which is going to provide like kind of like a shadow box effect. And then it's going to cut the outside. Now, all of these pieces can come together. You can glue these together. But a couple things that I would just highlight is as it's doing this, uh, notice at the very top, you're not really getting significant charring taking place. Now you do see the flame going on the bottom and this is why we, we kind of spritz with some water, the actual stone and material that's at the very bottom of the bed. But there is really little to no charring taking place, which is something that also surprised me given again, the, the power of the CO2 laser. Keep in mind, 25 millimeter, 25 millimeter is how much you can cut. Now, this laser is pretty big. It's talking about 1,400 millimeters wide by 1,150 millimeters deep. It's 950 millimeters tall. And you also have the actual laser component. Um, you know, this is right now using the CO2, but the cutter piece and the welder piece, that's going to be another piece. And that piece itself is 355 by uh, 610 by 620. 
So if you are considering something like this, you're going to have to make sure that you have the space. Definitely in a creative space, you can use this, but you do need um, space. And this is going to be a lot smaller than traditional machines of this type, but still it's something that is going to take up some space. Now, next is acrylic. And the acrylic, acrylic is hard to do, especially with something that's powerful. But this thing, again, was just eating through it like nothing. So it did all the pieces. Uh, we did the exact same model that we did with the wood. We did this in the acrylic. And it just went through and cut and cut. And it didn't melt anything. And all the cuts were nice and clean. Now, we also did use the rotary. And the rotary is really cool. It was too fast. It was like, it's done already. And this is, again, if you're just going to be cutting some cylindrical objects like this, um, it, it did cut like a design into the metal. Uh, it was hot, but that's it. Look how fast that thing worked. Uh, so it has a lot of expandability. So you just don't have the, the power of the bed and the size of the bed. But if you want to be able to do things with the rotary, you can as well. And again, it did, it did it really quick. Piece right there. It's too hot to hold on to, but these are all the samples that we were using to actually cut out things. And we'll go ahead and bring this a little bit closer. You guys can see that on camera, just the cutouts that it did. And this is just going to save any, any crafter, any commercial user a lot of time. Now here, what you can see are um, the line feed as well as the actual cutter and that we were looking at that was inside of the larger unit because it's just reusing the same components. It has a large display, which makes it really easy for you to uh, set up your line speed, your, you know, the type of settings that you need for either cutting or in this case, since we're going to be doing welding. And then I just wanted to show you some of the consumables that you would require. So here you see the consumables in the back and you see that there was an air purifier that we had connected. And that was the other thing is that we were using this thing and we were not venting outside, but we were doing things inside. Now this is a really powerful solution and we got to play with this. It was really fun. The thing about this is that it had the power to go through the material to weld everything and then it did a really nice clean. Now, it has several safety features. Uh, so uh, before you actually are able to run the laser, um, you have to touch the material because it will not start welding until you have done that. So what you're gonna see next is we're gonna first put our piece that we're gonna weld and we're gonna tap on the actual material for a second until we get that green light. And then once we have the green light, we're then going to weld. And it is fast, right? So, and when we took this piece and we looked at the very bottom of it, you could see the welding line underneath the actual metal. And then all you're getting is this nice finishing bead here uh, that just makes everything dressed up really nice. So what we're doing is tacking each side first to hold it in place. And then you can watch how quickly we just zip through it just fast. Here we go. And it's a clean finish, really, really clean finish. This was fun. Uh, it was fast. And I can just see a lot of possibilities for those of you who are, you know, working in a commercial space to create, you know, these type of welds uh, for the material. And it's a really strong weld too. So we were, we tried to bend it, we tried to break it apart, we couldn't. It was very, very strong. Now, removing rust with the laser is really easy and fast. And this is really important. I learned as I was talking to a commercial business that a lot of the parts that they get in that are steel tend to get oxidation and rust really quick. And clients don't want to see those parts coming in when they're going to do a job. So they actually get a grinder and grind off all of the actual rust. And the person was telling me that this is a huge time saver given the speed that he saw. And also that this is going to turn into more profitable jobs because of how much time it takes to clean off that steel. Now, the next thing we saw was a G3 in action. Uh, G3 uh, doing a business card. We also saw it do a challenger coin. And it's a pretty fast machine, right? This is a powerful machine. And I'd say it's a complimentary machine because what we ended up doing is we cut challenger coins out of the brass that we had and then what we did is we started embossing them on the machine and i like the transition going from one machine to another again if you're going to have that kind of setup in your shop but obviously this is not intended to be a commercial machine more of a uh, in, in the sense of you know somebody who is a plumber or someone who was dealing with large pieces of steel this is this is like for me yeah so we do a lot of cards we do a lot of coins uh, but it's a great complimentary solution. Also, if you're a commercial client, if you want to serialize um, all of your inventory or if you want to serialize all of your tools. But this did a really nice job here, as you can see. And we also then were playing with challenger coins. So we had a challenger coin that we actually engraved or cut there engraved as well. And again, you'll see as it's going through it, it's starting to do the passes to do the actual embossing. And I know a lot of you are participating in the Kickstarter, really anticipating 
or looking forward to what this machine is going to be like. And the conveyor belt works well, uh, especially if you're going to be dealing with batch items you want to get through them really quickly. And then you have the uh, single item uh, creation that you're seeing right here. Now, I wouldn't engrave a challenger coin on this belt. I'd have this belt or this, um, yeah, this belt removed and just do it right on the surface because I wouldn't be doing, you know, that many and having it move. Uh, but anyways, it just, just shows you kind of like the flexibility and the versatility of the machine of how well it does also coins. Now that I'm at home, I wanted to get a close up of all the parts that we cut so you can see what our experience was. So first of all, let's go ahead and start with what we first started, right? With the stainless steel first. And I wanted to show you kind of like the plastic jig part that I took that we recreated and then all the way uh, through all the material that we work with. So this is what I created when I took, um, again, to the actual shop. And there's a couple of things that the cutter will not be able to do. So this is a 3D printed version that I use and I created. And you'll notice that it has kind of like these little areas that are kind of uh, recessed in. And that is so that I can remove a coin easily, right, once I do the engraving. Uh, or the embossing. And so what we use this is as the model. Now over here, this is what we were able to do. You'll notice it does not have this piece right here where the where you're able to lift things up easily. But this is what the quality looks like. And if I were to compare one to the other, you know, it's pretty spot on, right? They just took my model and they did it on stainless steel. So this is the stainless steel. This inside was clean. This is, this is clean. This was clean. What I noticed though is there's some areas here that especially where I think that the laser um, started, where it does that spit, where it raises things. And there's some stuff, let's see, I don't know if that's going to show up on camera there, but there's some stuff right here that could be cleaned off, like that you'd have to grind off or just sand off. Outside of that, you can see the sides here are very, very clean, right? This is a very clean piece. It's only where the laser kind of uh, spit the first cut. And I find something like here, and I find it in these areas. Now we went from there. We then also did a uh, brass and the brass came out so nice. Look how clean this brass was, right? This one, interestingly, didn't have any of that, what I call spit, right? So this is smooth on both sides. Even over here, this is nice and smooth, but you could see this is where it looks like it's spit, right? Cause you have that kind of edge there where it goes and it starts cutting. And you'll notice it doesn't exist anywhere else because this is one continuous cut. So this is the brass piece, steel, big piece of steel. This was hot. We couldn't touch this for about 15 minutes because it was so hot. We just left it on the side and kept on touching it. Now it wasn't like hot, like scorching hot, you know, during all that period of time, but it was still hot and I was not comfortable holding it in my hand. So I wanted to let it cool off. But here you'll notice that again, clean cut. It has kind of some, I would say some ribs here that you can see. And you can see here where it's spit again. Uh, you can see that uh, where it has like kind of like that notch. I don't know if I'm using a technical term or not, but that's what I call it. It's the first cut spit. Uh, you don't have anything on these four screw uh, holders either, but it's uh, definitely a beautiful piece. And again, you can see, bam, the same and the same. Each one of these rock solid, the same. So I have jig pieces from all different types of materials. Now, the next piece that we had here was the wood. And I want to show you that is a big machine. And I did no cleaning. What you see is how it was or how it is when it came off the machine. So this is the piece that came off of that machine, which was part of a lantern. Now, it did miss this piece for whatever reason, but all the other cutouts are nice. You can see the burn that it did. This is a really nice piece, right? Acrylic is something that really impressed me. This is a really thick piece of acrylic. Look at that. And basically, it cut everything. Let's flip this around. Uh, you can see that the jack-o'-lantern mouth is there present. And if I were to compare it to this one, you can see how everything aligns nicely side by side. So guys, I got to tell you, I'm super impressed with the technology, impressed with the magnitude of materials that you can cut. It was just an incredible experience. So guys, that wraps up our first look. And we're happy to be here with GWIC checking out their next generation laser line.